Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord today. I really feel in my heart, feel in my spirit that the Lord is ready to do a mighty work in some individual lives. I like it, I like it, Brother Manning, when we come to church. Brother Robin, we feel the presence of the Lord, just feel the place, right? But I really like it when he's got something special for me, huh? I really like it when I can step out of, of feeling like I got to be a part of a group and just work on my relationship with him a little bit. When he's got a word for me, when he's got a touch for me, when he's got something special for me, is there anybody in the house that you need something from God? It may be a secret. You may not have told nobody. It may be evident to everybody, and you still think it's a secret. If there's something in your life as an individual that you need from God, come on now, come on here, come on, that you need God to work on, I come to tell you, today's your day. It's by faith, by faith, by faith. I'm going to preach something this morning. I'm going to share something with you. I I may have preached from this passage as much or more than any I've ever preached from. John chapter number 5, John chapter number 5, verse number 1 through verse number 8. Amen. And when we begin to preach on praying through the tabernacle, and i got to tell you, I, I'm having, I've been putting on Facebook on that preacher forum about what the Lord's doing since we preached that and since we've been praying through the tabernacle and since we've increased our prayer meetings. And, and I had somebody yesterday call me and ask me to send them all of my notes. Hey, I told him, I said, you may not get anything out of them because I'm not as smart as you think I am, but I sent them on anyway because God's doing a great work. He said, I know what's happening down at your place. I want part of it too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all right with me. We're in the kingdom of God. We're in the kingdom of God. I'm not all about being territorial. I'm about raising up some men, and they're going to start a church somewhere else. I'm about raising up some men and women that'll, that'll get a ministry, that'll get a calling, and they'll begin to branch out. I'd like nothing better, nothing better to have people in every country in the world. Huh? We fill them full of the Holy Ghost, get them full of the Holy Ghost by the Lord, get them empowered and filled with a calling and with a burden, and we get, turn them loose. We may not see them again till heaven, but that'll be all right. What a reunion day that'll be, amen? amen. Praise the Lord. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, verse 2 said, there is at Jerusalem... By the sheep market, or by the sheep gate, would be a better rendering, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Verse 3 says, In these, in these porches, lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down, verse number 4 says, at a certain season into the pool, and troubled the water. Whosoever, everybody say whosoever. Then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Everybody say whatsoever. Verse 5. And a certain man was there. Everybody say certain. That means me. Huh? A certain man. Do you really believe that the God of all creation, the one that said let there be light, the one that made the Grand Canyon and made the mountains and made the rivers, uh, do you really believe the one that walks on the water and calls forth the dead knows who you are? As an individual, he knows who you are. And a certain man. Each one of us are special in the eyes of God. Amen? We're precious. We are his workmanship. He created us. In his image and likeness. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Somebody said that's a long time. And when Jesus saw him lie, laying there, and knew that he had been now a long time. Everybody say a long time. In that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole. Amen. 
will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him. Now the Lord said, do you want to be whole? The man said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. There is, the Bible says, in Jerusalem, a pool. But I got to point your attention back to the very first verse that said there was a festival of the Jews and Jesus came to Jerusalem. Because just the same as there's a pool there, and their faith was in the pool, but something different has showed up in Jerusalem. Or there may be a pool in Jerusalem, and it still may work, but there is also in Jerusalem a Savior, and His name is Jesus. I got to tell you, whatever's going on in your life, whatever you're battling with, those of us that raised our hand, I got to let you know first and foremost, above everything, that Jesus is in the house and he's in the house for you. He's not in the house for the music. He's not in the house for the preaching. He's in the house for you. He's in the house because you need him. He's in the house. He's here. The presence of God Almighty is in this building. And he came for each one of you as individuals. The pool. I know I'm going to get a few amens today. Maybe you just keep on hollering. We like noisy church. There you go. The pool was surrounded by five porches. Under the canopy of these porches lay a multitude of impotent folk. That word impotent means weak and without strength. Now the Bible gives us a description, elaborates a little bit on their weaknesses. There were some that were blind, some that were halt, means that they were crippled up, and there's some that were paralyzed or unable to move. The Bible says withered, unable to move, period. The name of this multi-porched area was Bethesda. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. The great number of folks that were lying in various states of inadequacy, they were not there because it was pretty porches. They were not there because the water was nice and cool. They were not there because they wanted to hang out with a bunch of other folks that had problems. They were there because it was a house of mercy and they were there because they needed mercy. They weren't there for the fellowship. They weren't there because misery loves company. They were there because they needed the mercy that was exhibited at the house of mercy. Mercy is the outward manifestation of pity or compassion. Now, we are all capable of mercy, right? You see some little child running around barefooted in the snow on the ground? We're all capable of going and buying them some socks and shoes, right? And I might add to you, we should be doing that. Because if Jesus saw them, I guarantee you they wouldn't stay barefooted long. There are things that we can offer to somebody when we see or we feel their need, right? There are things we can do to help folks. However, these people were looking for a manifestation of mercy that only comes from God. They were looking for compassion. They were looking for mercy's hands and mercy's feet and mercy's eyes that only comes from God Almighty. In short... In short, they were there looking for a miracle. The needs that were present under these porches were beyond the scope of man's abilities or charity. 
These people were at a place in their... Oh, hear me right now. Hear me right now. These people were at a place in their life and that only a divine touch could move them from the place of lacking or the place of want to a place of completion. There was no doctor. There was no medicine. There was no feel-good book they could read. There was no herb they could take. If God didn't touch them, they were going to stay like they were. This is why you may have come today out of guilt. You may have come because your mama made you, at least in your mindset. You may have come just because you want to see the show, because you heard we're all nuts. Well, let me just dispel that notion right now and let you know we are. We are. The Bible, Paul even said, I'm a fool for Christ's sake. This is why everybody's here today, is because of our need for mercy. Whether we have come or are coming or will come to the Lord, which is by faith, which by faith includes everybody, it will be because we need something from him. It'll be, boy, I tell you what, man, you make me feel like the best preacher in the whole world, bro. He don't ever take his eyes off of me the whole time. I might need to move you over in the front and the middle. We are here because we have something we need, and we haven't been able to find it anywhere else. There is something that I need from the Lord. There is something that you need from God that we don't find it nowhere else. Say, well, you're the pastor. That's right. And I don't keep coming back for the money. I don't keep coming back because I like all of y'all. I keep coming back because I find Jesus when I come here. I keep coming back because there's something That when I'm weak, is always strong. There is something that when I come in low, he's always high. It's the presence of the Lord. And Brother Pete, the Bible tells me that in his presence is fullness of joy. So I can't wait to get to the house of God. I can't wait to get into his presence. Because there's something I can find when I read the word, hear the word, get caught up in the singing that I don't find anywhere else. Amen. At the house of mercy. It's inspiring to read of Jesus feed 5,000, 4,000. It's inspiring to read of him, of, of him blessing a whole group. But it's when it gets specific that I get excited. It's when I realize that I too can be the focus, that I too can be the focus of the master's attention. The Bible said there was a certain man. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, this should be a scripture that you at least commit this first part to memory. Think about it. A certain man that's got the attention of God Almighty. What's he got God's attention for? The Bible said, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect Toward him. Now, 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 now. Think about this a minute. I come to preach a message of hope to somebody. Now, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you've not been baptized in the only saving name there is, the only saving name there is, which is the name of Jesus Christ, that's what's missing in your life. Because we get baptized not for all of you to see us, 
But the Bible said in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Your sins are washed away in baptism as it is a confession of your faith in the healing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues, that's what you're missing. Let me just establish that right off the bat. You're missing it. Because there ain't nothing in the world like it. Nothing in the world can do for you what the Holy Ghost can do for you. But I come to help some people tonight. I come to help some people today, excuse me. By the time I get done, it may be night. I come to help some people who you got your heart in the right place. That your heart is in fact, now I want you to hear me, and this is going to blow some theology plumb out of the water. How many of you know the Lord doesn't wait till he gets you just like he wants you to be good to you? He told his disciples, and this is paraphrasing a little bit, but he told his disciples, I'm with you now, but I shall be in you. But the important thing is he was with them until he got the opportunity to get in them. I believe there's some people, and I don't want to get all spooky and hocus pocus on you, but the Holy Ghost has dealt with me about this for weeks, for months. There are some people under the sound of my voice. Remember, I've already established, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you get it today. Now, Miss Francis can tell you, I can preach on anything and you can get the Holy Ghost. I can preach on y'all need to pay your tithes better and you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Even though half of people get mad. No, I'm just teasing. But I preached the other night on you got to give, you, you, on, on the problem of giving less than your best. And it was heavy. But Miss Francis came down and God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you have the Holy Ghost today if you want it. It's promised to you. Repent of your sins. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You either get baptized before you get it or after you get it, but you got to be baptized. So I come to minister to some people today who your heart is right. That, that you want what God has for you. But there's something just holding you back. There's something you can't get past that every day Lord, I know you're there, but there's a mountain in your path. And you peek around it, and you see him, and you feel him, and you know you're coming toward him, but there's something in your way. Can anybody feel me? Huh? Your heart's in the right place. You are physically in the right place. But there's something holding you back. Wilt thou be made whole? I come to tell you that whatever it is, by faith in the name of Jesus Christ, when you leave here today, it'll be gone. For the eyes of the Lord. Because see what the devil does in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that he is the accuser of the brethren. That he stands before God day and night accusing us. And you know what? Brother Marcus, sometimes he's telling the truth. We do have that problem. Sometimes we do have it. But our heart... If your heart wasn't in the right place, you wouldn't be here. Amen. If the lame man didn't have hope that one day he was going to get in the water, he wouldn't have kept coming back. But the devil will take that thing that's in your life, that obstacle that's hindering you, and he'll magnify it, and he'll use it to beat you to death. Because he's a liar and the father of it. And he'll take a problem that you have, an issue that you have, and he will magnify it to the point where he convinces you you can't be saved because of this thing in your life. 
Huh? So he's using a real problem, but he's turned it into a lie. Notice this. The focus of the Holy Ghost today is on those who have their heart in the right place. But there's something hindering or lacking in their life which is limiting or hindering them from walking in the fullness of what they know God desires for them. Yesterday, I, I, I was at the church. I, I, just, I just felt like being at the church yesterday. We worked a little bit. I prayed a little bit. I prayed some more. Come in, prayed some more. Walked around thinking about this. And I, some of your faces begin to come to my mind. And I begin to be overwhelmed with emotion, with compassion, with a desire to see mercy in your life. Because I know that you have big plans. And I know you have big desires. And, and I know that if I can just convince you that God will deliver you, that the blood of Jesus is good for what's wrong with you, if I can just let your faith get up, God is going to do greater things than he's ever done before. My desire is right, but I'm not where I need to be. And fill in the blank is the reason why. The thing about this is it's usually not a mystery. It's usually plain as the nose on your face. You face it every day. It's, it's in your vision. I need mercy. I'm doing a lot of good. I'm going forward. I'm making progress. But I need mercy to release me from what's holding me back. I'm not talking about generally speaking. You hear about healers. In a crowd this size, I could stand up here and say, I feel in the Holy Ghost that somebody's got a back problem. And you know what? I'm going to be right. I, I believe there's somebody got high blood pressure. The Holy Ghost has just led me to speak to somebody that's... Y'all feel what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? We can just generally speak about so many things in, in a crowd this size, you're going to get right. But I come in the spirit of the Holy Ghost this morning that's not interested in playing games with anybody's future. But he's walking among us, if you will. Jesus is here. And he came with the solution for your problem. He came with the key to your lock. He came with the diagnosis for what ails you. Not generally speaking, but speaking right into your heart where you really live. That's what I want to deal with this morning is I want to deal with where people really are. Mistakes, mistakes don't destroy you as long as you keep your eyes on who God is. Mistakes only destroy you when you magnify your mistake and magnify your problems until you make it bigger than God. I'm talking about certain things for certain people. Now, don't get nervous, but I'm about to get plain. Y'all ain't got nervous anyway. I come into this morning to come against addiction. Nicotine, caffeine, food, pain pills, pornography, and alcohol. Say, now listen here. How can, well, I know I'm wading off into strange territory. How can somebody have that problem and still have their heart right toward God? Happens every day. Boy, I'm so excited about what the Lord's about to do up in here. We got to get, get, let the Lord work on our mind a little bit and realize, God, you know my heart. My heart's in the right place. My heart's striving for the right thing. I, I'm just weak. I'm just weak. But the Bible says very plainly that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. 
I'm not telling anybody that these things are all right. I'm telling you, we got to get free from them. But these things, these things are just slowing you down. They're just hindering you, and I want them gone. Can I stand before you today and say 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt? If there's anybody under the sound of my voice that you're addicted to nicotine, cigarettes, or chewing tobacco, that you're addicted to caffeine, that you can't survive every day without your coffee or without your Coke or without your Mountain Dew, if you can't eat, if you can't fast because food drives you nuts, if you can't function every day without eating pain pills to survive, if you can't sit down at your computer in the middle of the night without clicking on a pornographic website or if you can't pass by the liquor store without getting the shakes and without turning in, it's not the will of God you stay that way. So I come to ask you today, will thou be made whole? Oh, I just felt the power of the Holy Ghost. Woo! We got it all figured out. We got it all planned out, just like Mary and, and Martha did. If you would have been here, he'd have been healed. But now he's dead. Been that way four days. Dead. If you'd have been here, but now it's too late. Let's go eat, mourn, grieve. He's dead. Limitations, reasons why we can't. That's what the devil wants to magnify. Didn't bother Jesus. He walked over to the tomb, said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, if you're, oh, God help me. If you're under the sound of my voice today, it's because you've been called here. I don't care what reason you might think. I'm telling you it's because you've been called here, drawn here by the hand of God Almighty. But I want you to notice what happened. And I didn't have this in my notes. But what happened when Lazarus come out of the tomb? Jesus spoke to him and said, I came to speak that into somebody's life today. I came under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ to say, loose him. Loose him! And let him go. Wilt thou be made whole? I come today, I come today because of affliction. Those that, I want you to hear me right now because I, 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 there's a different set of parameters with affliction. Those that have been hindered by physical infirmity to the point that it has affected your mind and is destroying your faith. Sometimes, I want you to hear me right now. Sometimes God heals and sometimes he don't. But if he doesn't, there's a reason for it. What I've got to deliver us from is the mindset that comes with affliction. Instead of a viewing it as something that's trying to destroy me, I got to view it as something he's trying to show me. Say, I don't know if I believe that. Well, let me show you. Paul said, I sought the Lord thrice. I sought the Lord. That doesn't mean, Brother Pete, that he said, Lord, if you would. Lord, if you would. Lord, if you would. He didn't. He sought the Lord, Brother Booby. And the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for thee. Because my strength 
is made perfect in your weakness. So then Paul said, I want you to notice, this is Paul speaking, not the Lord. Paul said, so when I'm weak, So that means when I am weak, then am I strong. Now, don't please do not think, well, he's preaching that it's not the Lord's will I be healed. That's not true. By his stripes we are healed. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Healing, healing is for us. But sometimes sickness is for us too. I got to dig on that just a minute. I came to say, wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? Takes a lot of faith when your body's wrecked with sickness and pain to lay hands on somebody else to be healed. And then the third thing I come in against today, and Lord, I hope you're with me, is I come to ask somebody, do you want to be delivered from your attitude? a way of thinking, a paradigm that has been formed in your mind due to the cares of life, due to abuse, neglect, due to bad decisions and bad company. Bad influence and bad habits have formed a bad way of thinking. Sometimes God can't do with us what he wants to do with us because we got our eyes on everybody else that's got these other problems. Psalmist David said, I'm in the Holy Ghost, don't worry. Those of you that are getting uneasy. Psalmist David said, what shall I render to him for all his benefits? I would submit to you that what I need to render to him, the best thing that I can give him. You know something, Brother Robbie? I don't, he don't need my money, though I give it. He can do without it. I give it for me. He don't need my house. He don't need my car. He don't need my suit or my tie. He just needs me to trust him. That's what I give to him as I trust him. I trust him. I trust him because the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Wilt thou be made whole? 38-year-long sickness, a 38-year-long battle to exist, to function at a diminished capacity, not living, God help me right now, not living to the extent that his heart desires, not living to the extent, you say, well, how do you know what that man desires? Where's he at? Huh? Say, how do you know what that man that's been sick for 38 years, how do you know what he wants about where he's at? That's why I know that he wants something, something from God, is because of where he is. He's not living to the extent that he wants to live because he desires more. Something's hindering him, and it's the very fact that he's lame, that he cannot walk, that he cannot move like he wants to move. When Jesus saw him lie, right where he was, Brother Shannon, right where he was, can I tell you that Jesus has got his eyes on you right where you are? He knows where you are. You're not hid from him. Your need's not hid from him, but thank God your potential's not hid from him either. He sees you and he knows where you are. And the Bible says, and he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. The Lord ain't forgot you. He hasn't forgotten you. Just because you've been battling a long time does not mean he's turned his back on you. Does not mean that he's give up on you. 
does not mean that he's forgotten your name or he's forgotten your potential or he's forgotten your possibilities. He knows right where you are and he knows what you're doing. He knows what's going on with you and that's why he sent me today to ask you, will you be made whole? Yes, amen. Will thou be made whole? So Jesus asked him that. He said, wilt thou be made whole? I've always been perplexed, Brother Billy, why even ask him? There ain't nothing there but sick folks. There ain't nothing there but the Bible said a multitude of impotent folks. Blind, halt, withered. Blind, lame, paralyzed. He's made his desire clear. He ain't hanging out at the house of mercy because of all the positive thinking that's going on. He's not hanging out at the house of mercy because he likes to play cards with the blind guy and the lame guy and the guy that's completely paralyzed. He hangs out at the high house of mercy because he's looking for a miracle. But then Jesus asked him, did he want to be made whole? Now, God help me right now. Why would God ask him, will you be made whole? If we're not careful, we become comfortable where we are. Sometimes what we have portrayed as a stumbling block that's hindering us from doing what God wants us to do has become a security blanket that we can grab a hold of so we don't have to do what God wants us to do. Because when you step out on faith, Peter never had walked on the water before. You know what God has for you. How many, of, how many of you know somebody? There are folks among us right now that, that you've lived for God like you got a rubber band tied to your back. And you get so far. And then, pow, you get pulled right back where you were. We've known people like that all of our lives. I come to ask you today, there's no security in that. And God wouldn't keep pulling at your heart unless he was going to be with you when you go past where you are. God wouldn't keep working on you. He wouldn't keep drawing you. He wouldn't keep convicting your heart. There's nothing in it for him. He's going to have a church. He's going to have a bride. He wants to bless you because he wants it for you. He wants you to be able to live a life of fulfillment and completion and be able to walk not pridefully and not haughtily, but with your head held high and declaring, I'm doing a good work for the kingdom of God. I'm making a difference in people's lives. I'm bringing people from the guttermost so they can be saved to the uttermost. That's what God wants for you. It's to be able to walk in the fulfillment of what you know he wants you to do. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? I want you to notice something. This is a common thing that Jesus asks folks who are seeking something from him. What do you want? Blind Bartimaeus, Mark 10, 51. Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that you might get rid of my toothache. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that you'll ha let me have a good day with the cup. Well, that would have been a blessing. But he said that I might receive my sight. So here's what we got to do, saints of God. Visitors, guests, we got to quit playing hide and go seek with our destiny. 
Now, if that preacher, if he says it, now I'm going to believe it. You know what's holding you back. There may be some other needs you have in your life, but your runny nose ain't stopping you from receiving what God wants for you. Your checkbook ain't stopping you from doing what God wants you to do. You know where the hindrance is. It's a, you've heard people talk about the 800-pound gorilla sitting in the corner that everybody pretends ain't there. Come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about some people. I know who you are. I know several of you. That what I have just listed off here is like a big old collar around your neck. And every time you make progress, you get yanked back. If I could just get free. If I could just get free from this one thing. What did the rich young ruler say? I've kept all the commandments. I've done all right. And then the rich young ruler said, Jesus didn't say it. The rich young ruler said, what lack I yet? There was something missing. There was something missing in his life. You know what's going on. You know what's holding you back. The lame man knew what was holding him back. The blind man knew what was holding him back. I'm concerned when we dance around the true issue, afraid to articulate it, afraid to speak it out because of a stigma or because of pride or or because we're afraid or because we think nobody knows. I feel today that there are a number of folks among us that you're lacking and you know what's lacking in your life. Say, well, brother, we're having great services. Yes, we are. But we ain't where we're going. Huh? We ain't where we're going. There are things that are promised to us. There are things that are promised to us. Now for some of you, as I said earlier, there's no doubt. You need the new birth. The baptism of water in the name of Jesus and the baptism of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But there's some among us who you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. But there's something that's holding you back, hindering you, stopping you from stepping into your calling. So I must ask you the same question Jesus did. Wilt thou be made whole? Now, as soon as I ask it, I feel the response of the lame man coming back at me. The lame man, you think, Brother McKinney, that the lame man would have rolled over, crawled over, propped up on his shoulders or whatever, and said, yes, sir, I'll be made whole. But he had a practiced response. Sir, I don't have any helper. Sir, I don't have a helper. I don't have anybody to help me. I can't do it by myself. And then he said, while I'm coming, somebody more able than me steps in front of me. And once again, I'm left waiting. I'm about to close. In case you was wondering, I know what time it is. Somebody. I got to preach to the spirit. I got to preach to this way of thinking. Boy, it seems like everybody's getting what they need. Look around me. This one's getting blessed, and this one's getting the Holy Ghost, and this one's getting delivered, and this one's getting blessed, and your faith goes. Our faith should be being built by what we see around us. But we begin to ask ourselves, why are they getting what they need, and I'm not? Sir, I have no man. Because while I'm coming, everybody say, while I'm coming, someone steps in front of me. I've often wondered, why was it that the there's a whole multitude of impotent folk gathered around the pool? And can I tell you that this day, somebody is going to be first in the pool and be healed? Huh? But, Brother Robbie, there's a whole multitude of impotent folk. They filled up the porches. What was it? If you grasp a hold of this, 
you're going to close me down. Okay, I want you to think. If you grasp a hold of what I'm about to tell you, you're going to close my sermon for me. Brother Billy, why did Jesus go and pick out this one fella in the middle of that whole crowd of people with all kinds of problems? Only one's going to make it in the water first. The rest of them are going to be left waiting. Brother Pete, why did Jesus go and speak to this one man? Read the Bible. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, he did never quit. Say, well, I hadn't been getting what I wanted. I hadn't been receiving what I need. I'm not where I want to be. And then the devil says, well, then you just need to give up. It ain't for you. It ain't bless you. The only hope the lame man had was to keep coming. The only hope that the lame man had was it may be 38 more years, but eventually all these folks are going to be healed. And one day I'm going to maybe crawl, scratch, scoot myself along, but I'm getting in the pool. My day's coming. Jesus said, your day is here. Your day is here because you wouldn't give up, because you wouldn't back down, because you didn't stop coming, you didn't stop trying. Your heart's in the right place. Your heart's in the right place. He said, rise. Take up your bed and walk. Reality says no. The hope for mercy says don't stop. The hope for mercy says, don't stop. This is my day. Yesterday, somebody else got blessed. I will rejoice with them, but I'm going to get mine today. I'm going to get my blessing today. This man had made a decision. The help I need is in this house. The help I need is in this place. The help I need is in the house of mercy. And I'm going to keep coming back until I get my answer. Let's stand. Will you be made whole? Will you be delivered from the effects of addiction, affliction, and attitudes? I want, if you would, every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm not even going to look around. Because you know what? You don't owe anything to me. Can I get an amen? amen? You don't owe anything to me. Paul said, For I determined to know nothing among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because whatever's going on in your life, Jesus died for you to be delivered from it. Huh? Huh? Jesus died that you might be delivered. Will thou be made whole? Now I know I've waded off into some uncomfortable territory and I know I've preached a long time. But today is the day somebody gets to take up your bed and walk. Today's the day when your faithfulness pays off. Today's the day when your continued hunger and thirst for righteousness comes to an end and you're filled. If you know, if you know that I have preached to you this morning, now I've got my eyes closed. If I fall over the altar in a minute, y'all shouldn't know it because your eyes need to be closed. If you feel like that the Holy Ghost has spoke to you today through this word, I want you to raise your hand. Amen. 
If you know exactly what the Holy Ghost is talking about, I want you to keep your hand up. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Wilt thou be made whole? If you believe it's God's will, put your hands down. If you believe it's God's will, if you believe that the Lord gave me this word for you today, I know y'all want to find a good song, but you know what? That ain't important right this minute. If you feel like the Lord has spoken to you today, spoken into your heart, if you feel like the Lord has confirmed what you've been feeling, I want you to come down to this altar and I want you to come with faith. And I want you, I want you to receive completion. I want you, if you raised your hand and you made a, a, a testimony in the face of God Almighty, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. And I know we're not bumping and thumping right now, but that's not what it's all about. He didn't tell Bartimaeus, according to how good you feel, be it unto you. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. I believe we need to fill this altar up. And tell the Lord, I want to be made whole. I want to be delivered and speak out what you need to be delivered from. Because it is God's will that you be delivered. It is God's will that you be made whole. But it's according to your faith and your faith in the word of God and in the power of God. It's God's will you be delivered. It's God's will you be made whole. It's God's will that you be perfect and be what he wants you to be. It is His will. It is His will. Come on, speak the word of faith. It's about you right now. If you, if you feel like you're walking in the fulfillment of the Holy Ghost, find somebody to pray with. But if you feel like you're lacking, it's about you for just a few minutes. God, I need to receive what you have for me. I need to be delivered. I need to be healed. I will be made whole. It's not about somebody else and it's not about what I can do. It's about what you can do, Lord. I will be made whole. In the darkness where everything is unknown. I face the power of sin on my own. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh. Come on, if you've got the Holy Ghost, there's people that need to be prayed with. Come on, if you've got the Holy Ghost, there's people that need to be prayed with. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody prayed with you. I could come into his presence without fear. Into the holy place where his mercy hovers near. I'm
against the power of sin on my own. I did not know of a place that I could go where I could find a way to heal my wounded soul. He said that I could come into his
think we need to just lift our hands one time and thank God for the work he's doing. Thank him. Come on, come on. Lift your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the word that spoke to my heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Brother Bobby and Brother Robbie, come take up the tithing, please. While they're taking up the tithing, I'm going to make some announcements. We're doing a candle fundraiser. We're selling the Bible verse candles. Sister Jessica Henry has the order forms. We're going to be raising funds to help move our sound equipment to the back and, and buy some new sound equipment. Uh, Tuesday night, October the 22nd, we're leaving the church at 6 o'clock, going to Boyette's at Real Foot. And... Uh, uh, we want everybody that can to go. I've said it many times, and I'll say it again, that uh, if, you, if, if the reason why you're not going is because you can't afford it, you just hand me your ticket. Having a hayride, October the 26th. Uh, it's uh, it's youth focused, but everybody's invited. They want everybody to go till our youth group gets so big we don't have room.